They may not be predators, but Cape buffalo are notoriously tough. Not only are they humongous, they're infamous for their quick tempers. And if one feels threatened, its entire herd can unleash its fury. Early one morning, we were following a herd of buffalo. There was about 350 buffalo in the herd. And while we were following them, they started acting very strange as if there was predators in the area. And we found four young male lions. The buffalo started harassing the lions and the, the young males were trying to run away. And in the confusion, they managed to divert one of them and they chased him. The buffalo is a herd animal. As soon as one takes a step forward, you've almost got your peer pressure to take another step forward. So once a few of them start to make an attack in terms of defending themselves and their youngsters, the buffalo will continue to put the pressure on the lion and the lion really needs to make a quick escape. He ran into a tree that had a nice fork in it and he held himself up in the fork of a tree. His paw, he was starting to shake and he was looking for a place to, to jump down. But as he jumped down, he landed right in the middle of the buffalo. They started beating him, they started thrashing him in the air. And as he got on the ground, they were just pushing their horns into him. The lion had been hit numerous times by these buffalo. He was actually lying flat on the ground. I thought he was dead. And then he kind of looked with one eye open. And at the same time, a buffalo came from behind and hit him on the backside. And with the momentum, it lifted him up. He ran away. The buffalo ran right after him. And we were then tailing both of them. And we managed to see him escape, which was absolutely incredible. In the wild, some feuds are so deep-rooted they bring out the worst in animals. Lions and hyenas often compete for the same food and therefore have a long-standing hatred of each other. Well, I was guiding in a private game reserve in the Sabi Sands and it was on a night drive. I was following some lions and they started hunting. We saw eyes up ahead We heard the lions start running, running in, and then we heard this huge commotion going on. So we drove up to the scene. It was actually a horrendous sight that we arrived to. This lioness had caught a hyena and was in the process of strangling it and, and mauling it. Lions and hyenas are sort of mortal enemies. And it's really because they're so similar in body size, they like eating similar sized prey, and therefore the competition between them is so much more intense. Another lion came in and savaged it on its hindquarters. You could hear bones cracking and tearing flesh. One thing that struck us was the, the hatred, that intense hatred that lions have for hyena. They really dislike them immensely. This has been a traumatic social interaction between the lions and the hyenas. The stresses and the strains and the sort of anxiety were, were probably being expressed. This is competition at its highest point. Hyenas often kill lions offspring and vice versa. So the lioness uses this as a teaching opportunity. Two cubs started playing with the hyena, a mock attacking it. They were very safe at this point in time. The hyena was so traumatized and wounded by the whole thing, it wouldn't be able to hurt the cubs. And therefore the lionesses were quite relaxed to allow these cubs to interact and to learn about the hyena. The hyena did not survive. Erratic breathing was going on, but it died. It died after that interaction. They left the hyena, they didn't feed on it or anything like that. They just savage it, kill it, and then they just move on, like nothing has happened. Many of Africa's fiercest predators target the water buck, a large antelope. This peaceful creature does have ways of defending itself, even if they're not always successful. We got a, a call for game graph, uh, water bugs inside the water, and then... So we rushed from there, and then we saw water bugs hiding in the water. 
the line is just waiting at the edge of the dam. The line is very, very deep. The water book seems to think it's safe. The young uh, water boy starts standing. The water boy standing there. This line is sea order is not deep. So the female line is running straight in the water. Lions usually enter water as a last resort. But they're good swimmers, able to cross rivers and large bodies of water. Then bring outside the water, doesn't pull out of the water. Lionesses do share kills with their pride, but not always willingly. All the female lions just run in the water and start fighting. Ultimately, she's outnumbered, and the meal becomes a family affair. Lionesses band together in prides to protect themselves. But male lions know their strength in numbers too. We came across two male lions and they seemed very perturbed. We were following them and I looked in my rear view mirror and I thought, what's this, I'm seeing double or something. I saw four huge black maned lions and they made chase of these two lions. Two brothers are being chased by what appears to be a group of four related lions. The pair splits up, leaving one surrounded. You, you felt like the car was vibrating from this roar. You, you can actually feel it in, in your gut. It sounded like they were trying to get a message to these two blokes. Get out of here. It is so intense. It is actually frightening. Experts say it's a pride takeover. It's two old males coming to the end of their reign and four young males who are quite a tightly bonded coalition of either brothers or cousins saying, hey, it's time for us to take on the new territory and if you don't want to get out of here, we might just kill you. The four of them really circle this old male, each taking their turn to show him that they are younger, they're fitter, they're stronger. He's very submissive. He turns his backside in, he tries to protect his hindquarters and he certainly doesn't want them to get anywhere near his throat. Takeovers are often violent, but are the lion's way of removing weak animals to keep the population strong. Uh, when it was finished, I put the camera down and we just sat there, took a, a deep breath to realize we were in nature. Small but bold, the honey badger is a peculiar creature. Little is known about their social structure. Honey badgers are mostly seen wandering alone, and that makes even this brave animal vulnerable. We came across five young lions playing and climbing trees and falling off trees, and it was like a comedy act. And we were really enjoying ourselves. And then the lights started going and the lions wandered off. Suddenly, things take a violent turn. They fought a honey badger and were trying to kill it. There wasn't anything we could do about it because you've got to leave nature to take its course. And the honey badger fought and fought and fought and fought. And the noise from this honey badger was unbelievable. One was in the front and the other one was at the back and they were tugging it. To defend itself, the badger emits a putrid odour. The smell was unbelievable. 
It just wouldn't die. Most of the young lions get bored and leave, but one stays behind. And the honey badger was scrabbling, trying to get away from it. I think it fought as hard as it could, and I reckon it took about 25 minutes to die. The lions just walked off and didn't even bother to eat it. That had been killed for nothing. But I guess it's an episode that you're never going to see again, and it was an experience. The tallest animal on Earth. Giraffes are drifters, without a strong social structure. But these usually peaceful animals can become aggressive. These two bulls are locked in a battle for dominance. They are using a form of fighting unsurprisingly known as necking. As the fight intensifies, one of the bulls is cut underneath the eye. The males use their heavy skulls as clubs. Then, a rare turn of events. Where's the lucky thing, huh? Challenger hits his opponent just below his skull, giving him a concussion. The victim actually gets two blows, the first from his rival, the second when he hits the ground. Now his neck is an easy target for any passing predator. Luckily, the bull is able to walk away, defeated, but alive. The most elusive of the big cats, leopards, rarely blow their cover unless territory is involved. These two male leopards have been eyeing each other for days. The younger one, in the front, wants to take over the older one's territory. In this case, the younger male was, uh, was slightly bigger than the older one, but the older guy had, uh, had experience on his side. A male's domain overlaps with several females, so there's more at stake here than just territory. It sounded like taking bubble wrap and, and popping it from, from the nails going through each other's skin. This is the fight where these guys are going to kill each other, aren't you? And I think very soon after the fight starts, the younger guy thought that he bit off more than he could chew. Yeah, the whole guy standing up there. The animals become so exhausted, they rest side by side, but neither will give up. They both roll down an embankment, in locked in each other. And with the older male biting on the younger guy's head, they landed in a dry riverbed. It's rare for a battle like this to last so long. 
whether you're the aggressor or whether you're, you're getting the aggression from another animal, either way, you don't want to get injured. You don't want to risk a permanent injury that will affect your hunting ability in the future. They're both risking permanent damage to themselves. After 30 minutes, the older male gets the younger leopard's skull in a vice-like bite. It's the final blow. They separate, they moved apart, they lay about five meters apart from each other. The older guy got up again, walked around to the front of him and lay down, showing how big he was, still growling. The younger guy lost his eye. I think one of the canines of the older guy went through the top of his eyelid and pierced his eye, so he's blind today. It's a huge price to pay for a fight he ultimately lost. Nile crocodiles are ferocious under the best of circumstances. But when water is scarce, the males become even more ill-tempered. One of the most fantastic things I've come across was in the Lewubu River in Kruger National Park. I heard this strange noise, like water clashing and everything like that, and I went down to the river, and there I saw the fight of the titans. One male has intruded on the other's territory and finds himself locked in a death roll. We were in a very dry season. It was only happening because two males were forced into one pool. Fights like this usually last for less than an hour, but the animals are so evenly matched, neither can get the upper hand. This fight was over three days. It's crazy. And in the end, uh, one crocodile was eaten up by the others. It's a poor luck of a wildlife filmmaker. When two males come together, it's incredible. Rhinos use their huge horns to fend off predators. But they also use them to take on each other. We came around a very wide bend and there right before our eyes were these two rhino actually locked in battle. In Namibia, these two rhinos are waging an unusually brutal fight over a mate. This species of rhino, the southern white rhino, has two horns. The larger horn can grow to one and a half meters long. The one appeared to be stronger and fitter than the other one, and far more aggressive. The weaker of the two would keep turning around and trying to run away, and the more aggressive rhino would run up behind him and literally lift him right off the ground with his horn. The horn is made of compressed keratin fibers, the same material found in fingernails and hair. Yet it can lift more than three tons and inflict deadly wounds. The rear end of the victim was very punctured and, and bleeding from the amount of time it had been rammed. These fights usually end when one of the rhinos retreats. But in this case, the more aggressive rhino won't allow the weaker one to quit. It may end up being a fight to the death. African wild dogs live in packs where there's rarely any infighting. But that's not the case between different packs of dogs. 
we found seven wild dogs and suddenly there was a lot of noise around us. We heard it all over. Wild dogs running around through the high grass. We had no idea what happened. And suddenly we realized it was not the seven dogs anymore. It was at least 14 running around everywhere. The dogs are from rival packs and in the midst of a turf war. They caught hold of that one dog and they were pulling at him. They were growling. While some attackers lunge for the victim's throat, others bite him from behind. The skin on the back, especially the legs, they had ripped it off. It was bloody. I really thought he was finished. And the lady in the back, she said, oh, is he still all right? Is he still all right? Most think he's already dead. But they're wrong. Wow, this is something new you will never see in your life. Even the ranger said uh, he lived there his whole life. He'd never seen something like that before. But like many big cat males, cheetahs stick together. The males, usually brothers, live together in what are called coalitions. They mark their territory, which includes the territories of several lone females. The males will kill to defend it, but their fights are rarely caught on tape. We were out filming one day, and we came across two sets of cheetah, which I knew quite well, and they seemed to be a standoff. Two coalitions, a pair of brothers from the north and one from the south, stare each other down over a shared boundary. The sides are evenly matched, making the fight even more intense. ferociously for a couple of minutes and then they'd need to rest again. The stakes are high. If one cat is killed, his surviving brother may not be able to defend this territory alone. As exhaustion sets in, the fighting becomes more chaotic. They just didn't know who they were anymore. And the fight just got so ferocious that one cheetah actually turned and started attacking its brother without even knowing. Eventually, the animals are so exhausted, they call a truce. All four are badly injured, but survive. I spent the last 20 years working in the wilds of Africa. And this is the very, very first time I've ever seen Cheetah fighting like this. Wild dogs are among the most skilled hunters in Africa, more successful than lions. But their kills often attract their arch enemy, the hyena. The Ronda Losey game reserves was following adult wild dogs. Eventually they caught a young impala. One hyena arrives and thinks he can dominate these four wild dogs. So he charges right into the middle of the dogs. Hyenas and wild dogs, ever since they first came across one another thousands and thousands of years ago, they were never going to be friends. They were never going to be mates. They were never going to get on. A hyena weighs three times as much as a wild dog. This hyena's got incredibly powerful jaws, so there's no way they're going to hit it face on. Because they know if that hyena even gives them one little nip, it could potentially crush a bone and they'll never hunt for the rest of their life. As a pack, the dogs are powerful. They manage to attack the hyena from behind, where he's most vulnerable. He started squealing, yowling, eventually he ran off with his tail between his legs. So in that case, 
the dogs had successfully defended. But the dogs don't always come out on top. We followed the wild dogs and then at a distance we saw it already. By the time we had the vehicle stopped and the camera up, this little antelope was already torn into pieces. We saw these two hyenas coming in. One of the hyenas took one of the pieces and the wild dog saw that. To defend himself, the hyena backs into a hole. The hyena obviously knew that its most vulnerable side is the back end, is the blunt end, and the sharp end in the front is the one that needs to do the job. But there's no way that they could have gotten that hyena out of the hole. Ultimately, the hyena is saved by his quick thinking. When it comes to hunting, leopard cubs must be fast learners. They stay with their mothers for just two years before becoming solitary hunters, so practice is key. We'd been out for about 45 minutes or an hour when we saw the leopard for the first time. The rangers said to us that the leopard was about 19 months old. That particular morning we didn't see the mother. It was playing, it was climbing trees and running around and having a great time. Initially when the leopard jumped onto the branch, we didn't know there was a nest of ox peckers there and neither did the leopard. The leopard suddenly seemed to hear something. We saw it moving towards the end of the branch and we didn't know what the leopard was trying to do. But obviously what it was trying to do was to get into the nest. Then the first bird flew out of the branch. The leopard caught it. In fact, you know, the bird was still squawking and didn't kill the bird immediately. It was just like a cat playing with a mouse. Eventually, the leopard eats the bird. After that, it then went back to the end of the branch, virtually repeated the process again, and caught a second bird. It's a small snack, but a useful exercise for the future. It really looked like it was just learning how to hunt, finding its feet, and enjoying itself, quite frankly. Monitor lizards seem slow and clumsy, but the reptiles can climb, dig and even wrestle. We saw these two monitors standing in the road. It sort of reminded me of a, of a miniature Jurassic Park scene. They were interlocked and tumbling sort of head over tail, almost doing cartwheels right next to the vehicle. We obviously thought it's two males doing some kind of combat behavior. The lizards are going head to head over a female. The normally solitary males will spend the next few months fighting then making passes at the opposite sex. The way a female attracts a mate is by moving around during the mating season, leaving behind a set of pheromones to an extent. Obviously you can have one or two or three males that will, will link up on the same scent trail, and when they get closer to the female, they come into contact with each other, they'll start this combat. For the female, this is a win-win situation. She's all about securing the, the love or the life of her young and by doing that she wants the strongest, most virile male mating with her and by the males having combat, this is how that's obviously achieved. It was just incredible to capture that kind of footage for a smaller animal as a scientist and a photographer, um, it was like a dream come true. Dogs 
Vultures are known for feeding on the carcasses of other animals, but are rarely hunted themselves. Nature is full of opportunistic eaters, including the small but cunning jackal. There were some uh, vultures bathing in the water. Suddenly a little black-backed jackal went for one of the vultures. In the past, I've seen jackal, you know, chasing birds like doves and little quail finches and uh, actually succeeding in catching them. <laughs> but uh, I think the vulture is a bit big for me because I think they weigh about the same. One expert says an attack like this is unprecedented. I have never before seen this kind of interaction between a vulture and a jackal. They do occasionally get aggressive towards each other when they're competing for a carcass, but to see a jackal attack a vulture so persistently and just wear it down is something that I've never seen before. It looks very much like the jackal is actually intending to eat this vulture. I don't think it would have put in that much effort if it was simply a competition issue. The vulture puts up a good defense, spreading its wings to appear larger and using its powerful beak to stab at the jackal. But the bird's bulk prevents him from flying off and makes him ungainly on the ground. The jackal keeps his prey grounded until he can finally reach its throat. An odd turn of events for two long-time competitors. Male zebras are unpredictable and they become especially dangerous when breeding or territory come into play. In my filming, I, I often cover about things that sabers are fighting, but in this special case, this one developed into a real fight. Each zebra stallion leads a harem of females. When one goes into heat, stallions fight for her, since a female will remain with her mates for life. This fight takes an unusual turn. When the fight went on for about 10, 15 minutes, a third saber starting came in and stopped the fight. He just looked at that one and there. I, I didn't like you the last time, I don't like you now, and let's sort it out. The next fight, I could film was on the water trough in Kruger Park. The water was getting low and animals came together, but they were too close together. And when they're too close together, zebras have the tendency to kick, to make place. But in this case, the one saber that got hit couldn't get his head out of the way. After the first kick, I could see it was all over. One well-placed kick can kill, and this zebra won't stop. Blow after blow kept coming and coming, and it virtually sealed the fate of the zebra. And it died there on the spot. I felt sorry for it, but you must leave personal feelings out of it, as bad as you feel perhaps. Your job is to record what's happening in nature. Honey badgers prey on a wide variety of animals, from birds to porcupines. But one of their favorite foods is snakes. A 
I was uh, working in a reserve in the low felt in the Sabi Sands area. I heard over the radio that there was a honey badger attacking a python. I arrived at the sighting and I could see the honey badger running around in the grass. And then I eventually saw the snake. It was quite camouflaged in the long grass and the size of it was immense. The python is four times larger than the honey badger, who, amazingly, isn't deterred. And this honey badger kept harassing it and biting it. It was tiring it out. I could see that it was taking a lot of energy for the snake to defend itself. The honey badger was just too quick. At one stage, the snake's tail came up and because it was so disorientated and probably in a hell of a lot of shock and pain, it struck at its own tail. Snakes don't have particularly good vision. Obviously, just saw that tail move past in its line of sight and it just bit. It tried to climb up a small tree, but it was so weak it couldn't get away. Eventually, after about 10 or 15 minutes of watching this, the honey badger started to bite the snake quite savagely. The honey badger was just disemboweling the poor creature, bit it in the torso area and started pulling out intestines and things like that. It was quite a traumatic sight and it wasn't very pleasant to see, but it is exactly what happens in nature. One of the deadliest forces in nature is an elephant bull in must. Similar to human adolescence, the bulls are flooded with hormones, becoming unpredictable and dangerously aggressive. My husband and I went camping in the Kruger National Park. Next to the road, we came across two elephants standing very closely against each other. And we stopped to have a look because to us it looked as if they were playing. The playing, unfortunately, very soon turned into a vicious fight. I think what we're seeing is not actually a fight between two bulls, but an attack of one bull on another. Generally when bulls are fighting, they face one another head on, because that's the easiest way to defend yourself and that's where you have the greatest punch. It looked as if he was picking up the elephant on the ground with the tusks. The elephant just threw it down on the ground again. But the older bull, who appears to be ill, doesn't fight back. When a bull comes into must, his testosterone levels um, increase substantially, typically three times the normal benchmark. And so he just becomes this raging male hormone, which clearly has some impact on his behavior and his mood. He's frustrated, he's possibly disorientated. This other bull is not responding to him. And as a result of that, he pushes this other bull and the bull just falls down and doesn't get up. Which again suggests that there's something very wrong with this bull. The younger elephant seems so baffled that he stops the attack. starts walking around the other bull at one point he actually lays his trunk over this bull what he's doing is he's trying to work out for himself what is actually going on and the elephant kept on trumpeting the calls that we're hearing are not aggressive calls they're not a sense of triumph that this bull has that they distress call 
they confused call for they almost cries for the system. When the rest of the herd came, they made a circle around the elephant lying on the ground. The response that a herd shows to the loss or the death of another elephant depends on the relationship that that elephant had with the herd. The herd doesn't have a strong enough bond with the bull that has fallen down to actually come to his assistance. For onlookers, this was a difficult sight to witness. It was a very, very vicious thing to see. Because people think about elephants as these big, 